Hello everyone and welcome to the 8th episode of the OrcoCast. Today with my beautiful co-host, streamer extraordinaire, Lord Val Gaming. Hi! And today we don't wage war on some video games, we wage war on the streaming world. Well, <laughs> we talk about streaming. And my beautiful moderator, Bam Bams, sadly couldn't join us today, but we will make the best out of it, so... There has yeah, been. We'll miss Bamban today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's harsh. <laughs> no, no, we'll miss him. I'm, I'm being we'll honest. Miss him. Yeah, <laughs> obviously we do. <laughs> okay, so lots been happening in the streaming world since those infamous numbers have been released. Yeah. As you all know, both I and Val stream on Mixer, and Mixer saw a growth of 0.2%. And now a lot has been happening. So, while you, we can give the other side, while Twitch has grown a ninety-nine percent, yes, it's, you know, <laughs> it's a big, big, big difference within. I think streaming, streaming platforms in general have increased a hundred and something percent. Yeah, something crazy. But yeah, uh, Twitch seemed to be like basically gathering everyone, like ninety-nine percent of people. So. Obviously, they grown throughout, you know, this uh, COVID time a lot when people have been locked down, in, you know, home, you know, more people watching streams. And it is kind of that, that kind of started a bit of a, you know, a bit of drama going on around with a Mixer not doing well. And, you know, the King of Thalion thing and, and you know, what's uh, also the mention from, uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy... Is um, Shroud? Uh, Shroud, yeah, Shroud. So basically, he, he actually, you know, on live stream, he mentioned the, uh, the fact that, you know, we gotta give it time to the platform. He actually did a live stream. I don't know if you saw it. Yes, I uh, saw. I, I saw the summary video of it. He said more yeah. stuff about it, like it's a young platform. You have to give it time to growth and everything. So he made some fair points in that video, and he didn't come off as scripted because obviously he's paid by Microsoft but it didn't come off to me as very scripted or as something where I say okay that was if you look if you looked sorry uh, if you look yeah. at the stream at the last stream it was natural it wasn't scripted yeah yeah that's that's what I say yeah he, it doesn't at least it doesn't felt to me like Microsoft handed him a script and said do damage control please Mm -hmm. It felt more natural, that's what I'm yeah. saying. And he did a really good job at that. So I give him kudos to that. Absolutely. I think it just happened to be right on the... You know, it just happened to be... Uh, right. He was in the middle between games, I believe it was. I wasn't watching, but I actually... Rather than just watching the clip, I decided to go and watch the actual stream to see in what context that came from. You know what I mean? I, so I went and watched the VOD and it was basically, you know, you know, someone mentioned that and he actually just came, he just came out of the blue, like the moment he the, the, he was talking, you know, they was talking about, you know, a Twitch and a Mixer and the streaming platforms and everything. And he just happened to, you know, to go and mention exactly that thing. So that, that was, well, you know, the clip was taken off the, that thing. So it was completely natural. It wasn't scripted at all. So it's just, you know, a comment in the middle of the stream that, you know, happened to be he actually went on and answered to that comment. I think he's got a point, in my opinion, but if I tell you, I actually think he's, he's got a kind of a point and then he's wrong at the same time. Yes, I can agree to that. There is obviously, I, I don't think Mixer is perfect. Let's get that out of the way. I enjoy the platform. I prefer it over Twitch, but I don't think it's a perfect platform. Do I think Twitch will? Uh, do I think Mixer will be fine? Yes. Do I think it will ever be on the top? No. No. And that's where I stand. And I think this is where we need to go from. Yeah. I. Yeah. I kind of think like it's only a matter of time. I don't think we'll ever get to the point of Mixer to be where Twitch is right now. Uh, which, I don't know, for those that have been around streaming for a very long time, Twitch used to be called Justin TV. 
Twitch has been around for a very, very long time. Twitch is not joking. They've been around for, it's been over 10 years now. It's a crazy amount of years. So Mixer is, is new. It used to be called Beam, and it's just changed recently to Mixer about, what was it, two, three years ago? Yes. They, they like, you just, just do the maths. They, they, they nearly 10 years behind. So it's, uh, in my opinion, it's a very, very young platform that is growing at a good rate. And it's got the, in my opinion, should get a bit of a, more of a backup from Microsoft. I don't see much from them for some reason. Like I would expect, like, do you remember when we spoke about a couple of episodes ago, we were doing the review of the Xbox Series X. Exactly. Uh, you know, they, they actually showed it and they were showing games and they were showing stuff like that. The one thing that stuck to me, not because I'm a mixer, you know, a mixer partner or anything like that, or a mixer streamer, it stuck to me. It's like, you guys are Microsoft, you own a console, you have one of the biggest presentations in, in, in the last five years, and you don't show your platform that you are going to give access to because you're basically promoting the Xbox Series X as a console that actually will let you uh, stream again with even better quality and even better stuff. Why don't you put Mixer anywhere? On that presentation, it's so big. It's so, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's so, like, it's so important, that presentation. It's so, I don't know, so many people are going to say, we saw like 20 scary games and a single word of, of, of Mixer or their streaming platform. They, they wanted just to focus on gaming because, you know, the whole thing, you remember the Xbox One yeah. drama, uh, it was the all-in-one box and it didn't play games. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it, that, that's, that's the intention with it, but I don't so, know. Uh, we, we, we got such a massive platform and Microsoft is one of the biggest companies out there and it's not pushing it, in my opinion. So, my take on this is, you're right, Microsoft does not do enough to push Mixer. I don't know why they don't do it, but they should keep more, or they should do more. I know that Shroud said in his video that advertising was planned, but due to COVID, it fell through so far. Maybe mm. they still will do it. What Microsoft could have been done during the presentation or in general, I don't know if they do it since E3 is not going to happen this year. But if they do another Microsoft pre or Xbox presentation, they should just come out and say, look, we have this amazing streaming platform called Mixer. And when you have your Xbox, you can just right out of the, out of the gate, start streaming every game you own on that console and maybe become the next ninja. Who is also coincidentally streaming on our platform? Yeah. Do something like that. People know Ninja. People know Shroud. They are so recognizable, and they need to advertise it more. We got we got a big we got big streamers now here, like King Gathalion, We have yeah. Ewok. We have Shroud. We have Ninja. We have homegrown talents like you because you pull rad numbers, if I may say so. Yeah, well, no one near them. <laughs> I don't know how long have you been streaming. You have started out with me, basically. Didn't you? Yeah, about yeah, about a year ago, yeah. I started in October last year to take this seriously. Obviously, mm -hmm. I got some disadvantages over you, which I'm well aware of. I choose to use a face rig, which is not as good as your real face. <laughs> I disagree with that. You disagree with that, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it's necessary to have a camera or or to put your face on the stream. I think just the, the fact that you can put a, uh, your face on the stream kind of make people a bit closer to you. They, they yeah. feel like they're talking to that person, they're talking to you, you know, to the person that, that they're seeing on the screen. But that could be very uh, negative in the same way, you know what I mean? Because yeah. uh, the same way, it could be very positive because they're talking to me, they can see my face, they, they, they ask me questions, they know how I react to stuff. But what about if... I am the most boring person in the world. You know, I don't have anything. Like, I, I'm not maybe not good at games, so you know, I like my expressions, so I don't do anything out of the normal. You yeah. have to be an entertainer, be a streamer. If you are, Proud. you don't have to. No, uh, because you're a beast on any game you touch. Yeah, um, you just you just have your raw skills, and that's enough. Exactly. That's exactly. I mean, you just have to be good at the game, and that's it. I mean, there's so many people that are not entertainers, and they're just good players, and they've known they've been known for a very long time, so they are yeah. big. You know, 
the big heavy guns, everywhere they go. But the, the same thing could happen with a person like I'm talking to you. You know, I'm used to talk to that person, to that orca, which is talking to me. It's just I'm having a conversation with that person. So at some point you are also an entertainer and you are having conversations. You, you're talking to people, you, you establish, you know, a relationship with them. So I've, I've, like, I'm, I'm, I'm the same thing that happens with people without camera. Like we know you never knew that doesn't have a camera. Uh, OPG that doesn't have a camera and they like big, also big, big streamers, you know what I mean? And they don't have a camera, but they, they, they rely on talking to people. You know what I mean? Yeah. They I like, know. you know, they, they establish the conversation, they get to know you, you kind of like at some point, even though you don't see a face, you know that person, you know what I mean? In the argument of the, you know, the camera is a necessity. I disagree with it because it's your persona. It's okay. your personality. What is going okay. to make a great uh, audience or a great community and people, you know, coming back to you, basically. Well, I appreciate that sentiment because it's what I basically see also. I think camera makes it a little bit more easier, but you can also build a community without a camera. That's true. Hmm. I, I would say the word I would choose is different. We agree on different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Back to topic. Uh, mm. Not drama, but happenings. Mm. <laughs> so, um, and from this point onwards, when the numbers were published, let's say the Mixer community was in turmoil. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, some I'm, people. Some people, yeah. I mean, I'm rock steady, a Mixer guy, and that will never change. Because Mixer is home, Mixer is family. A lot of partners have left Mixer as of recent. I know that Jerumi left. She was a partner who I watched frequently. She left to Twitch. I know that Mudcat left, who was a big guy on Mixer. I didn't follow him, but I know he was pretty big. Mm -hmm. um, I know that who is also a partner will move his music streams over to Twitch. He announced oh, he's streaming on Mixer, though. Yeah, he's still streaming games on Mixer, but he moves his music streams over to Twitch, which is kind of okay. weird to um, me. I mean, probably yeah, but... you got a bigger audience on music. Yeah, so... probably. Um, yeah. He announced it yesterday in his Discord. So uh -huh. that's publicly available information. I'm not leaking anything here. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, about the partners I know that moved, I'm pretty sure more moved. Yeah, yeah. There's more, not, not partners only, but yeah. there's more streamers, you know, friends of mine that, yeah. that have moved, that made the move to, to the other platforms. Each person will have the, the reason to, for it. Um, like, yeah. there's a friend of mine, you know, uh, you know that we, 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 we all know. He used to stream like VR games. To be honest, it's not a big VR community on on Mixer. You know, it's kind of difficult to get it out there if you're a VR streamer on Mixer. It's a bit difficult. So uh, that person has moved to Twitch. You know, I, it seems to be doing better on Twitch. You know, I, I think the diversity of, of Twitch, the, you know, the diversity that Twitch offers is a lot more than you know, that kind of like, for example, VR, there is not really a specific, you know, I don't see probably one or two VR players on, you know, streamers on, on Mixer, but not, you know, if you hover over to Twitch, there's a ton of them. Mm -hmm. So, the you know, that's also a big, you know, I don't know, they, they, it's that diversity. But we, it's, it's the same thing we come back to what we spoke about before is we are doing, you know, we are way behind. We are like 10 years behind. We are relatively small even though we don't have like a small number or anything like that but we're relatively small compared to yeah. you know the numbers of twitch polls i mean i can actually you know go even into more detail about you know how many viewers per streamer is on each platform so because all the data is yeah. out there you know twitch at the moment has 20 i believe it's 27 point something about 27 28 people streamer and mixer only has uh, three uh the, the, you know the, the, the difference between both of them is massive it's big. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty well known that Mixer has a viewer issue in the sense that a lot of people are just streamers supporting other streamers. 
That's yeah. something that is well known. That yeah. is, but this is also what makes this community actually great because at this point we all know each other and we all support each other because we know what streaming is about. This will obviously change once more viewers come in because the viewers will obviously also be maybe trolls, people mm. who pick sides, people who try to spew drama. Yeah. And then we get slowly into the territory to which is now, in that sense. This is at least my take on it. I mean... What about the comments? What about the comment that we spoke about? Uh... I mean, the big big streamer that said everyone leaving to Twitch is now it will be back in one month I'm not sure about the time frame and I'm not sure about the all but I agree that probably most of them will be back at some point I don't want to shame anyone who goes to Twitch I wish you the best of luck there and I'd be happy if you find success there that's just a disclaimer I'm putting out there it's just from my personal experience, I've seen people leave Mixer, I've seen them coming back. And more often than not, they came back. So mm -hmm. this is where I come from. If this doesn't happen, then I hope everyone found the success they were searching for on Twitch, and more power to you. I kind of disagree with you there, because if they make, I mean, if they make the moves... I don't think they're all going to come back. They, they have to try, in my opinion. Most of them have never streamed on Twitch before. It's kind of a, in our genes to be curious about something that we don't know. We want to discover, we want to know things. These people, like, for example, I come, I come from Twitch. I used to be a Twitch streamer. So I've done Twitch for a fair amount of bit. I would say, I would say about, I did Twitch for a, a few months. I tested the waters on, on Twitch and I just, it wasn't my, you know, it wasn't my style. I don't know. Uh, the community is massive. Well, it is very difficult for a new streamer to be discovered. If you take off, you can go all the way, you know, the likes of, you know, Tifu and all these guys that are like super famous now uh, over on Twitch. But uh, for a new streamer, it's kind of hard and difficult. It, it makes it really difficult to, to start with. But uh, yeah, like these people are coming from Mixer with a big community, half big community already. Yeah. Pro Mixer, you know, trying to move them over to, to Twitch. Uh, I don't know how many of those people are going to move over because most of them are actually streamers, which are already streaming on, on Mixer. So I don't think most of those people will move over with you, but they, they, they got the curiosity and they see the numbers and they can't, for some people, it puts them down. They, 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 they put them off. It's basically say, oh, we grow to 0.2%. When you know Twitch got a bunch of people, he's got a 99% of the, the you know the growth, and it's like you know there's a lot more people there. So at the end of the day, kind of like you know it's in our nature to go and try to discover something new. Yeah, I mean if it goes well for them, I'll, I actually think they're not going to come back. Twitch is a very strong platform, and if they are able to bring a few people over from Mixer and kind of start building a community with, you know, kind of like mixing the, the, the Twitch people, the, the people are going to start watching and, you know, the Mixer people. And that, that could be, that could result in that really good, you know, really good thing for those people that are moving to Twitch. Yeah, I, I don't think, I don't think they're coming back. That's fair. It's not a thing about, I don't think it's about how bad is our community or how difficult it is to grow. It's about more, it's more about, I want to try this. I think there is future here. Yeah, you know I what I mean. That. It's kind of like they believe and 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 they want to try because it, it's nothing bad with the platform. It's just simply they think there is more opportunities on a different platform. That's all. I completely agree with you there. I don't have anything against Twitch. I think it's a good platform. I think it has every right to exist, and I don't even see it as a competition really to Mixer. I think Twitch and Mixer streamers should just be a, as much friends as Mixer streamers are with each other. It's just yeah. my opinion. I, I'm just saying from, from the experience I have, and I like I said, I don't want to shame anyone for it or anything. I've seen people move to Twitch, say 
I will try Twitch. Let's test the waters there. Let's mm -hmm. see how it goes. And then they came back to Mixer after a month. That's mm -hmm. my experience. And that's why I say the guy who tweeted that out, the Mixer partner, is right to some extent. There's always exception to the rule. And I'm well aware of that. For example, we mentioned earlier Shirumi. She's a partnered streamer. And she has a very tight-knit community. And she has a very tight-knit community. Because I'm also in her Discord server and everything. And I think she might do very well over there. Because I can imagine her being able to mobilize her community to come with her. So she might stay. And she might grow from that, obviously. And you think well. the rest of the people will come back then? Not the rest of the people. I just say most of them will be back. Most of them. Most of them. I don't say yeah. all because all is absolute and I don't deal in absolutes. Only cis, cis do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I think most of them will be back at some point. I mean, I know a guy who wanted to start streaming at Twitch. Mm -hmm. He started out. And then it occurred to him, oh my god, I don't get my game keys anymore, which is really important to me. So he moved back to Mixer, because he gets better numbers there. Game keys? Yeah, for his game keys. So free video games, basically. So everyone has their reasons, I'm just saying. I mean, if that's a particularly good reason, it's up to everyone self to decide. But that's his reason yeah. for coming back to Mixer, and he came back. Yeah. And it's not the only person I know who came back to Mixer. Yeah. Just from experience seeing a lot of people who left came back. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And from my experience and my point of view, I will say most of people most of the people leaving who can't mobilize a big community, which you already said, because the Mixer community as a whole is very tight knit, mm -hmm. might come back. Yeah. There's always a might in there, but that's my point of view on the entire situation. And again, I just want to emphasize, if you left Mixer and find success on Twitch, good on you, and I'm really happy for you. Really, I am. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't want um, to shame anyone for choosing a different platform. No, if, if people want to make a difference between Twitch uh, and Mixer, it's just, uh, it's just for the sake of arguing. It's yeah. the same thing. I, I compare those to, to the same, same situation between PlayStation and Xbox. Yeah. When people ask me what what what, what should I play what should I play on? I was like I always say I always do the same answer. You should play on whatever platform you have the most friends on. Exactly. That. And that's uh, a perfectly valid argument to make. Like at the end of the day is, you know, that the, this is what you know, these are the guys who you're going to be playing with. So it's the same thing with uh same thing works for Twitch and Mixer. Um where are you going to be streaming? Just stream whatever you have the most friends on and that's it and whatever you enjoy and the community is nice to you and and that's about it uh, people might say uh, we come to the next uh, subject actually with this uh, people might say you know there's more toxic people over on twitch rather than mixer i would say of course there is more toxic people how many more thousands upon thousands of exactly. people are on twitch if mixer grows we have the same problem exactly and I believe that because if you, if you obviously have an influx of people, you also have an influx of <clears throat> trolls. Yeah. And people on the internet think they're entitled yeah. to say whatever they want. So uh, I mean, it is what it is. I, we're not going to dwell on that. But um, the more we grow, the more people are going to be, you know, kind of like trolly and. That's, that's just I mean. that just comes with the nature of people. Exactly. A friend of mine said said on Twitter that 80% of all crimes are done by 7% of all people. It's kind of a statistic. I have to look the exact numbers up, but that were roughly his numbers. Mm -hmm. And I think it's it's the same when you look at streaming. Like 80% of people are, or 80% of toxicity comes from 7% of your users. It's probably mm -hmm. around the same stuff. You always have someone who crashes the party. Yeah, totally. I, I I just I honestly think it is. You know, we have a wonderful uh, platform as well as well as you know. Uh, we haven't mentioned it, but you know, Facebook is starting to tap into the you know 
streaming platforms as well. Uh, we got uh, also D Live. Don't forget about the life, even yeah. though they're not too big, but they're still there. I mean, if if they're there, there's some bigger streamers there as well. Yeah, but D Life lost their biggest streamer back to YouTube, mm -hmm. which was PewDiePie, and I think they also lost all the viewer base he brought with him. And when we talk about toxicity, we should also mention D Life. Have you been there? Uh, I have been to D Life, but not as much as. You know, to know. There are some... I got no idea. D-Life... D-Life is very special. Okay. Good people there as well, but it's kind of an abyss in some respects. I don't want to say more. D-Life is special. I have been there. I have been streaming there. That's actually mm -hmm. the platform I started out on completely. I'm not proud of it. Two streams didn't go too well. Then I moved to Mixer. But now I'm on Mixer. <laughs> okay, so it didn't go well in what sense? Uh, I attracted a lot of trolls. Yeah. That, that's that's strange. Yeah, it's just the nature of the platform, I guess. Mm, yeah, oh, okay. Um, I, I don't want to harp too already, long. You know, it happened to be a coincidence with people. Could, or something could or also be. I mean, yeah. could have two bad nights, whatever. I'm mm -hmm. over it. I'm here on Mixer and... This is where I stay. I made yeah. my home here. It's, we can also not forget about YouTube. That, that's why I left that one to the last one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because whole, that one... <laughs> YouTube is probably the most interesting candidate when we talk about streaming. I, I would say, if you ask me, you're my opinion, I think YouTube is the future. Yeah, it is. And I completely agree with you. And our team leader, Bobby Laramie, would agree with you as well. The only thing they need to do... And I think they're laying the groundwork for it now is to mm. flip the switch. They, they really close. Because there are even more people on there than on Twitch. And once YouTube flips the switch, it's over. We have a massive platform. Yeah. Not only on a streaming platform, yeah. they have a massive platform on discoverability. Yes. People, numbers, they, they, they got a massive structure already. Mm -hmm. the moment they decide to go for it everyone can get out of the way the only problem that i find right now on 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 youtube is the lag of between the, if you're streaming if you're live streaming on on youtube there is not youtube doesn't have the faster the light that we call on on mixer you know what i mean uh, mixer has a you know what we quote unquote faster than like ftl yeah. so basically what happens is it's it's almost almost real time point the seconds yeah. yeah it's like literally next to nothing yeah. uh, between the person talking and what you see on the stream so yeah. you can basically be on a party with someone uh, listening to that person and that person is streaming and you could be watching the stream and it will be, the stream will literally be half a second behind so that's how close it is people from I, I, i've been told about from people from twitch coming over to mixer for the first time and saying wow Wow, like, I, you know, I actually thought, you know, Twitch is like fast, but it's literally, you guys here on Mixer, it's like, oh, it's real time. It's literally, like, it's happening at the same moment. So there's no, absolutely no lag of it. I was like, is the, the you know, the, I guess that's got to be with Microsoft, you know, working on that. Or the problem with YouTube, the, the delay is literally, it's, it's about almost 10 seconds, I believe. It's about five, six seconds. It's a massive, it's massive delay. The moment, they flip the switch and they can make something like a faster than light. Oh, baby. YouTube is going, it's going, it's going up. They have the discoverability already of the platform itself. <laughs> it, it's already there. I mean, the platform itself is already there. They, they, they go, they, you know, everyone goes on to, you know, you can be, the, 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 uh, we can make the argument. You can be a fan of Mixer. You can, think you can be a fan of Twitch. But you know what we, you and me do? We both go into YouTube at some point. We go to YouTube because we watch a video or we watch something. Always, always, always. You Google something, there's a video on YouTube always. They got so many ramifications. If they really want to go for live streaming, which I believe they will. They will. They will definitely do it because as stupid as that sounds, live streaming is the future of entertainment. Mm -hmm. We are already moving into, into the space where we are... The streamers, I'm talking about the streamers, are basically mini-producers of our own TV show. 
especially when it comes to people like us who are let's say personality or entertainment streamers interacting with the audience it's a completely new kind of television if that makes sense yeah. it's immediate you get a response is that, you is that are brother? yeah gaming. yeah and you the audience is more involved in it than ever before they will go for it at some point i know they will if mm -hmm. they manage to do the live streaming almost in real time like you said and if they flip the switch discoverability when it comes to live streaming mm -hmm. it will just be massive there will be no tomorrow and you cannot imagine what happens next the uh, moment the flip the switch i'm out <laughs> <laughs> well i mean i i am definitely i'm happy on mixer i'm very happy yeah. i'm not gonna complain yeah. i cannot lie I got a night. I got a really close eye on YouTube. I'm, I, don't, I, I keep reading about you know what they're doing, what they're working on. I am actually surprised they haven't done it yet, but they they really close to doing. The moment they do it, I think it's just going to be over for every other platform. Uh, yeah. YouTube, in my opinion, is just the best platform to be live streaming. To be because it's not only uh, to be live streaming. Like they already like listen. You can do a live stream. That live stream is going to stay on that on your channel forever. <laughs> That's the other uh, thing. You got a YouTube video. Yeah. Boom. That's it. Yeah. You don't have to do anything else. Yeah. Everyone, you can be YouTube. You can be Twitch. You always go to YouTube. You Google something, you go to YouTube. You end up on YouTube somehow, one way or the other. If you kind of like, you know, into gaming or, or, or any or anything for that matter. You want to know how to do a hole in the world or something? Just go to YouTube, and exactly. they will explain to you how to do it. How to edit your video in fifty seconds? YouTube. That's how amazing. to how to stream for beginners? YouTube. How to beat the boss in level X? YouTube. How to how to how to everything is on YouTube. Exactly. Imagine yeah. if you have that on live streaming. You know, um, it, it would be. I mean, people can disagree. People can agree. Uh, my opinion is. If YouTube opens the door, not opens the doors, but they, they kind of go. I think the way YouTube is working right now, because we all know, you know, YouTube is massive. They, in my opinion, kind of, they want to, they, they have the live streaming, but it's not really, you know what I mean? They got the super chat and uh, it's kind of meh yeah. and it's not like really fast and stuff like that. But I think they're waiting to have like a structure. That's what I think the problem of Mixer is. There's no structure. You don't know if you're going to get the partner or not. It's simply yeah. the decision of Mixer to make you partner or not. But you only know that you can get to 2000 and God knows uh, what's going to happen from that point. That's the that's that's one of the issues with Mixer that the partnering process is just a big black box. You cannot, you don't exactly. have any transparency. <laughs> and YouTube has clear rules on when can you monetize your channel. I mean, the rules oh, on... I mean, the rules aren't as clear sometimes on YouTube as well. There is some leeway and how everything works. Mm -hmm. You cannot swear at all, for example. That's one of the things I think YouTube looks for. I mean, still, if you if you just look at the sheer numbers of people on YouTube, you will be fine because people will probably drop their super chats to you. Yeah, and, and you, you like they, there's like so many millions of people on YouTube already. Yeah. It's like you, you don't need to grow. It's a platform that is already there. Yeah. It's on. It's on it's mm. the platform. It's you done. don't have to do anything. It's just basically you're going to pop up because you love streaming. What's gonna happen is going to be like your logo is gonna have like a little red symbol on it and it's going to appear on my feed. Because I'm I'm subscribed to your channel and I'm open YouTube and the first thing I'm going to see is your little uh, you know icon with a red thing saying oh you live that's all you have to do yeah exactly so they, they just... already have the platform they they just have to I I think the problem YouTube has right now is and that's why YouTube is not doing better than anyone else and YouTube is kind of like the third in the you know, kind of like behind the race between Twitch and Mixer. You know, it, it all looks like it's Twitch and Mixer. They beat two guys. They, they're like racing with each other. And YouTube is kind of like not there because YouTube is the tutorial, pit, you know, the tutorial guy. Everyone goes and check uh, on this guy only when they need something. They're not there because of the fact that you don't get real time as of now, as of today. You don't get real time interaction because it literally takes five, six seconds to 
someone to see what you wrote on on chat that is not acceptable with yeah, that's, switch and, that's and that's the that's the thing the the most or some one of my friends said the most attractive part of streaming for them is that they basically say it's immediate it's in the moment everything they say is the interaction with the streamer and youtube needs to fix the lag to get these people on board as well i think he's right like i said it's this mini tv show we are creating for people and it's interactive and the interactivity is i think a big part of it or a big draw to streaming in general yeah it's it's just basically yeah, it, that's what i said before it's, it's mm. a big brother in real time the, the stream loots cards and all of that you know they they like to see you suffer they like to see you you know you know it kind of like it's it's fun to see you know or have fun with the streamer you know see the streamer struggling you know with the with the controller upside down you know trying to play a game or something like that you know it may it, you know we just the uh, entertainers trying to get you know that thing that big brother thing going on we we like let's be honest with ourselves we all love big brother when it came out it gets boring after a while or yeah. <laughs> because they do it over and over again and they do the same thing and they don't innovate we do innovate we do change but we kind of like this live show that keeps changing you know with the same person but it keeps changing. It is, you know, it's kind of like, I like it. I wasn't much into live streaming before, but the more I got into it, the more I like it because it's basically, you know, it's it's talking to that person. It's talking to a person that, you know, potentially becomes my friend. Yeah. And I get to play with him and, and you know, we do something. Like I used to look up, I, I still look up to, to, to him every day. Uh, Capon Gaming you know how happy i was the first time i got to play with him i was lead, i was made up i had to tell you i was made up the first time i got to play with him it was actually on destiny we were doing a we were doing a he was getting a raid carry team for him and a couple of guys that never did the, the raid before and i happened to be in the chat at that moment he sent me a message he was like yo you want to jump in and i was like yeah of course, absolutely. I, I, I literally was the happiest guy ever. I was the happiest guy ever at that point, man. You um, were basically a fan meeting his star. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, exactly. and that's what we are. We are more accessible than, let's say, a Robert Downey Jr. or a yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio. Exactly. We are, um, we are not... <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> we, we are nice people we yeah. talk to you we say hi to you every day and we uh you know chat with you every single day of the year so yeah exactly that's true that's basically what it is about mm. so another controversial topic we had in the streaming world today youtube is the future <laughs> youtube is the future <laughs> so this is already a controversial statement coming from two mixer streamers, but <laughs> there has a there is a figure in the streaming world okay. called Harris Heller who has a lot of insights and a lot of opinions, and he put out a controversial tweet saying yeah. that starting soon screens are boring or no. not. Useless. He useless. literally called yeah. them useless. Okay, he called them useless. Yeah. <laughs> he has opinions, I can have opinions. What do we think about that statement? I think it's completely right. <laughs> <laughs> you, you cannot put an argument to that. Okay. Uh, Harry Seller, in my opinion, is the guy I've been looking up to since day one. And I still mm -hmm. do. Every single day. Every single day. I've, I don't miss a single video. I don't miss a single thing of him. I literally like to follow the idea of the string jams yes i know copyrighted music <laughs> i know on the mixer side literally comes from him because he's right you know copyright <laughs> strikes are coming to everyone whether we like it or not he pushes everything to twitch kind of you know what i mean he's got the twitch logo onto his music and stuff i said you know what i'm going to do the same on a completely different way obviously there's not the music is completely different his music is like kind of like all chill kind of music which bores me to death <laughs> honestly puts me to sleep and i don't 
kind of like more energetic kind of music. The front of the page is kind of like a mixer logo. You know what I mean? I'm pushing to my people. I'm pushing to my family. So I, um, I used it recently, by the way, last Saturday. I was playing, yeah. yeah, I was playing a game and I thought the music was god awful. So I muted the game and put up your playlist. Yeah, uh, it's, it's more energetic. I think it's just that the music is a lot, um, you know, it's, it's energetic. It gives you, like, uh, at one point, literally, I'm not joking, yesterday on the stream, I turned off the, the, the sound, the gaming sound. And it's like, because it was like hyping me up just to me listening to the music. And everyone was in the chat. Everyone was going crazy because, like, you know, it, it is, it's, a, it's completely different from what he's doing. But uh, the idea comes from the same place. I think yeah, I've, I've put the words completely wrong before. Uh, the idea comes from him because I, I thought before he actually released that, because he, I don't know if you guys saw it, but um, he actually mentions something before he actually released everything. That's yeah, yeah. when I started doing it. And no one knew. I didn't even know he actually released the music. And I already worked on it because he actually, on one of his videos a while ago, he mentions about what happened to him at the start. It was a, kind of like a Q&A kind of uh, video. And he actually mentions where, where he comes from, basically. He comes from like, you know, he created like a music video kind of like on Disney. He was a uh, wine musician back in the day with his wife. Yes. And he became famous with a song from Disney, which yeah. got taken from Disney and they took everything they took all the money the, the, all the monetization of the video and blah blah yeah. so on that video that's when I started doing it so he already mentioned it and he said there is something uh, coming I think he said something he mentioned something but he never says I'm releasing my own music I thought now that we actually mention it I actually thought that he was going to release his own music because he's a musician and his wife they, they do music. They, he plays uh, the bass, I believe, and, and, and the, the wife actually sings. Yeah. So I thought it was going to be their own music. They're going to be doing it, like a normal album, you know, they're doing music as well. And they were going to say, you know, because it's my album, you're not going to have any, uh, you know, copyright strikes. It's completely, you know, feel completely free to, to use it. Yeah. He actually came up with a, just a chill out, you know, kind of, you know, playlist to have in the background. Which I think I think is wonderful, but it puts me to sleep, and I cannot be playing I don't know uh, Apex with a music that is going to put me to sleep. So yeah, I kind of like did something similar, but my thing was coming kind of at the same time, I think, but without knowing he was doing that. He gave me the idea. He I know he's right. Every single thing he mentions, I don't. You have to no, don't believe everything one hundred percent because he's a human being. He will make mistakes. We all Obviously. make mistakes. And, and we are wrong at some point. I think he, he's got a lot of knowledge and he likes to share his knowledge and he is good at what he does, just talking to people. And I think he's a cool guy. I mean, he's a bit, you know, like a bit cheeky sometimes. And, you know, he likes to be, but to be honest, at the end of the day, he's, he's knowledgeable. He knows what he's talking about. He's got experience and he does help a lot of people. And he's basically, you know, guided me throughout my entire streaming career, if I'm honest with you. Yeah. Um, I mean, he has a lot of insight. I personally come from the standpoint that I don't think everything he says is gospel. I think you don't either. I think that starting soon screens can have a limited amount of views. Or at least for me, I don't think I'm at that level where I go live and then I already have like 50 people in my stream. So I can take two minutes, three minutes to inform people, hey, I am live. Use the starting soon screen with some hype up music and then go into my intermission screen. It becomes ridiculous if you have like a countdown on your starting soon screen and it's like 10 minutes. That's um, something I wouldn't do. I used yeah, the starting... I'm going to make you the same argument as he does. So what's the benefit of the starting soon screen? Because you're not interacting with no one. I mean, Why I I'm wouldn't in... you want to have instead of a starting soon screen, just to start with the camera right off the bat and just welcome people. And That's talk to them a good come question. The That's a good question. Probably because I, from my personal experience, it takes them a while to come in. 
and most of the time when they come in, I'm already in my intermission screen. I mean, it really depends on the streamer, I think. There is a use case for it. If it has more streamer, yeah, fair enough. But still, the statistic says people leave during the starting Zoom screen. Usually what happens is yeah, the starting Zoom screen comes from, and he's got a good argument when he actually speaks about it. It comes from, you know, the concerts comes from, you know, like the, the TV shows and stuff like that. Like, you know, the big things, you know, yeah. there's always, you know, you hype it up some way. Uh, people get, you know, actually really excited about the, the whole thing. Because we, even though we're entertainers, you don't really get, you know, you're not a superstar. Like, no one gets all hyped up about being there first. You know what I mean? A good, a good thing that he actually mentions. Uh, I actually think the exactly the same thing because I actually mentioned it before. During the stream, people come and go, whether you like it or not. You will never have a steady number. No. People come and go. If yeah. people come to, come to you at the start, they will be with you an hour, top, or, or more, depends on the time they have. But the people that are with you, they're basically with you on their spare time on their leisure time or, or they're at work and they can, you know, chill out for a little bit and watch you for a bit. But people come and go. If they are at the middle of the stream, they can be like 20 minutes or five minutes or for an hour, but people come and go. It's, it's not a concert. You know what I mean? A stream is not a concert. Mm -hmm. You, how are you going to hype it? Because people are not going to stay for the entirety of the, of the stream. People come to you, they chat with you and at some point they leave. So the starting, I, I kind of agree with him because the starting screen, the starting screen is just basically useless. I would rather have a normal screen, just yeah. not the gaming screen, just yourself chatting with them and welcoming whoever comes in and just having a chat with them. I completely agree with him. Uh, there was the other guy who was actually, he's ha he was having the conversation with this other guy and he was like, you know, uh, some people actually say, oh, the, you know, I'm setting up, you know, making sure that the sound is all good. Uh, the cameras, the lights, everything, you know, the... the, the, the you do PCs that before you st hit, hit start. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Why don't you, you spend that. five minutes before you start doing the same thing? Yeah, probably doesn't make a lot of sense to starting Zoom screen. I completely agree with him. Uh, he, people have been kind of going hard at him for that tweet and saying that he's trying to create drama nah I, I just think that he's kind of like an open guy kind of guy and he likes to voice his thoughts and i think he's actually right he's actually right we are not a concert we are not you know a, a you know a, a special program we are the same guy it's, every day it actually goes also if you have a starting shoot screen now that i think about it it also goes against the thing I said earlier, the immediacy of everything. Because a starting soon screen is not immediate. It stalls. Yeah. I just think it's just widely accepted because everyone does it. And that's exactly what he says. And that's it's that's it. Nobody because everyone does the same thing. No everyone does it. Nobody thinks about it. <laughs> what it actually means, what it actually does. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a point there. I mean, kind yeah. of, he's right, basically. Yeah. It doesn't mean you have to get rid of your starting soon screen if you like it, do it. <laughs> yeah, but, of yeah, it's a massive point. Like, uh, to be honest, it's like, I think it's just a wonderful thing. Uh, he does voice out everything he thinks of. I, I think he's actually right. It's just that we don't, what is it, maybe Ninja's chat, when he starts a stream, they get all, all hyped up or something like that. Yeah, but if we are not have, Ninja. Yeah, if you have, I don't know. I actually like the intros from, from, from King Gosalion, I don't think. Yeah, but those are like animated little movies. That's yeah. different. That's not a starting soon screen. If you have a, st a static screen with starting soon and a few little animations on it, that's something else. I think Gathalion, he has like little movies and that's different to me. And they're different every time. Or he has various of them. Not different every time, but he has a... Yeah, he's got, like a, he's got a few. He's, oh, uh, he's got a selection of them, so it gets yeah. never really boring. And that's different. And Gathalion also has the kind of audience he really where he can afford to do that i think if you get to certain numbers mm -hmm. you can afford to have a starting soon screen maybe we're not at that level yet 
or at least I'm not. I would say you probably won't be either. If you are a ninja, though, then I could see that working. Yeah. Then I would tell Harris, Harris Heller to... Um, maybe he doesn't have a point there. There are like 1% of people who are ninja, and then there's 99% rest of the people. Yeah. We need to do things differently. We don't need to do ninja over again. Ninja already mm. exists. I well, no, like, I actually think, yeah, uh, like if you have, I would rather, like, I actually think it's just because King of Stadium actually think he, he's got it right he, uh, somehow. He, he's got it right. And because it's not a, a starting Zoom screen, it's an actual clip, which obviously it's, I mean, you cannot update that every day. That would be very, very expensive. Yeah. That would be very expensive. You cannot have a different clip every day. But you, you can. Out ideas. But you can, but you have a streaming schedule and you can have for maybe one for each scheduled day. So if you have three days, you can mm-hmm. have three intro movies. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's got like That's a, not... I think it's got like four or five. Yeah, but that, that would make sense, you know? It yeah. would be different, would be something else. Over time, it becomes the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, obviously. If if people now, if this podcast suddenly blows up and everyone thinks we are the most insightful people on streaming ever, <laughs> and everyone does the starting screens now like this, then uh, yeah, obviously, then we had, then we would have to do something else. Yeah. But uh, I I actually think going with these kinds of little animations that go for maybe like a minute for people who drop in to have something to relate to and then you just switch your intermission screen and say hi uh, uh, you you yeah. also have have this kind of neat little intro animation at the start yeah i like that a lot with the lightning and everything I'm, i don't think i'm going to get rid of it because i actually take the time when i go live to do my posts on on, on the socials and you know yeah, that's that's kind of thing I do as well. I mean, you could also make the argument you can do it on the intermission screen while talking to people, but I don't then think it looks nice if you're looking at your phone. Yeah, when exactly. Is on the screen. Exactly. That's the first thing, and the second thing is I would like to do it in peace because yeah. I would be also distracted from the chat, and the chat has always precedence. We can also do the same thing you said before. Do it yeah. five minutes before. Yeah, but then people might drop in, and you are not live; you're offline. Yeah, that makes sense. Use yeah, I use I use the time. I use the starting soon screen for the sake of doing the posts yeah. when I'm going live. That's, yeah, and that's the that's only the thing. Reason. That's the only thing I have the starting soon screen as well. I don't. I I make sure my setup is correct before I go live. Then I write a Twitter post, and then I switch to the intermission screen. The starting soon screen is not long mm-hmm. just to to post on twitter and maybe on instagram yeah i still have to figure out instagram we have to talk about that one day you're pretty good at it <laughs> 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 i need a few tips here <laughs> we can talk about uh, that stuff on on another podcast as well yes how to use your social media exactly so let's go back to the uh starting soon screen for a second yeah it's I, con- think it, I think it's right. It just depends on what, uh, you know, he uh, he's actually put the argument out there of saying you could simply, instead of having a certain to a screen, which no one is, you know, talking to no one and just, they're just waiting for you to go live, you could just be on your normal screen, just like that, welcoming people as they come in and starting to have a conversation with them rather mm-hmm. than waiting five minutes to go live. Like I said, the only use case I see there is the socials, doing the socials well on the starting soon screen. Yeah. Yeah. So you can reel people in. And that's what I meant at the start. Yeah. Because we have to do that. Yeah, we have to do that. We are not rock hard superstars. Yeah. Like Harris Heller. As Harris Heller clicks the the live button, everyone is there. That's a difference. And he only streams like three times a week. Yeah. That's the best part of it. Yeah, he's he's one of those people who don't need that. He clicks the live button and everyone knows he's live. Yeah. He he he's like that. It's it's like Shroud, King King Carthalian, Ninja. They don't need to do that. We need to do that. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right. Absolutely. So it still has a little bit of use. But I still agree with him. So don't linger too long on your starting soon screen if you do your socials. Make yeah, sure you... Not, yeah. You should have it prepared beforehand. Yeah. Kind prepare of, you know, like prepare you know your what stream. you're going to be doing and just, you know, taking the least time. Um, it is not... I don't think... I, I think he's actually right on the fact that, you know, you, you can overextend the, you know, start soon screen and that could be uh, potentially helpful for your actual channel. Yeah. I mean, one of the streamers I know on Mixer had like a 30 minute starting scene screen. What? Yeah. He had a countdown of 30 minutes. I don't know if he got rid of it. I will, I will, I will, I will (laughs) tell you off stream who that is. Wow. That's, that's a very long time. 30 minutes. Yeah, I yeah. mean, if he's chatting with people in the meantime, that's... no, 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 no. Oh, okay, okay. Well, that's too long. That's too long, in my opinion. That's way too long. Yeah. But I think, I think he got rid of it. I'm not sure if he still has it, but he has still mm-hmm. like a 15 minute timer. Okay. Okay. I I tell you who it is. Um, when okay. we're done with the podcast. Lovely. Um. Yeah. So that's it. Streaming world. I think this yeah. is a good point to wrap up the show. It yeah. was lovely to have you on again, Val. We should do this again at some point. Yeah, kind of recap of yeah. what's going on in the streaming world. Exactly. <laughs> so, thank you everyone for listening. Thank you for being amazing. If you're on YouTube, remember to thoroughly sum this podcast down if you disagree with us. If you agree with us, please give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment, like, favor, and subscribe. You know the deal. We're out. This Bye-bye. was Lord Rao. This is Orcosaurus. I bid thee farewell. Bye-bye.